let's talk about Death Watch in 9th edition, an army that's been performing very well competitively over the past few months. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're talking about the Death Watch, doing a bit of an army overview of their strengths and weaknesses. We'll start with a general overview, go through a few of their strongest rules and their codex, talk about some of the best Death Watch data sheets out there, and then finish up with a couple of competitive Death Watch lists. Absolutely loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. So Death Watch have kind of been quite interesting as a codex throughout 9th. When the codex was initially released, I think quite a lot of people were put off, very few people were playing them at any sort of competitive events, perhaps mainly because of the way that they worked in 8th edition being so different to the way they work in 9th. In 8th edition, they basically felt like codex special issue ammunition, and the way to play them was perhaps to have loads of guys with storm bolters, jumping in and wounding everything on 2+, plus with hellfire rounds. When the codex came out, special issue ammunition was heavily reduced, you couldn't get it on storm bolters and things anymore, meaning that you couldn't really build an entire army around that mechanic. More recently though, they do seem to be coming into their own, they've won multiple grand tournaments over the past couple of months, and plays quite highly at quite a few others. In terms of strengths of the faction, perhaps the most obvious one is their enormously flexible kill teams and veteran units, you can mix and match all sorts of crazy combos in the troop slot, and you can give a lot of fast moving hard hitting units obsec who wouldn't normally have it. Things like Death Watch veteran bikers or vanguard veterans, and potentially some of the other flavours of Primaris. They've got a fair few helpful stratagems for supporting those infantry based kill teams as well, and a very nice psychic power to give them a 5 plus feel no pain. Otherwise, there may be the easiest chapter to manipulate combat doctrines with, you can have plenty of units getting the AP that they need at the right time, either by choosing the order, using a stratagem, or stealing the Dark Angel's wall or trait brilliant strategist. You can basically guarantee you're putting your squads into the Devastator or Assault Doctrine when they really need to be. And perhaps most relevant for competitive play, they make absolutely amazing Dreadnought gun castles, and are maybe one of the best armies in the game for the playstyle where you take a bunch of Volkite Contemptor Dreads or Redemptor Dreadnoughts. The Forge World Volkite Contemptor Dreadnoughts that came out in the Imperial Armor Compendium are arguably one of the very best Space Marine firepower units out of anything they have to offer and I'd probably argue that Death Watch might just be the best chapter for supporting them and getting the most out of their shooting. Otherwise, despite their flexibility and crazy dreadnoughts, while they do have a lot of flexibility with certain unit compositions, a lot of the options just really aren't all that worth considering compared with more standard stuff. Even if you have loads of choice, it doesn't really matter too much if a few options are just the best. Also, as I mentioned previously, special issue ammunition really isn't that strong a mechanic anymore. You have to pay a bit of a premium for the Death Watch veterans taking bolters, and while they're still good fun to use in battle, the shooting of standard veterans still seems a bit less overwhelming than it was in 8th. Moving on, let's talk about their core rules. Their chapter tactic allows them to re-roll wound rolls of 1 against one battlefield roll selected at the start of the game. Can be pretty nice against any list that's spamming a lot of one thing, you basically get to pick one part of the enemy army and deal flatly more damage to it across the whole game. It's also generally a good reason why Death Watch lists might want to take captains rather than lieutenants, as there's no point on doubling up on wound rerolls that you already have. As well as this, you also get to reroll ones to hit against Xenos armies when you're in melee, a small but noticeable boost there. I'd say the chapter tactic maybe isn't always going to change all that much about what you do, but it's nice just to have a little bit of extra damage. Their mission tactics are instead of their unique combat doctrine, instead of having a unique one all of their own, they get to change up the order of when they pick their combat doctrines, and select the right one for each turn as they need it, though you can still only use the Devastator Doctrine once, the Tactical Doctrine up to twice, and the Assault Doctrine up to three times. Maybe this could be most useful for getting Assault Doctrine early if you really needed it turn two, you could have Tactical Doctrine on the first turn if you wanted, or perhaps save Devastator Doctrine till turn two, maybe if your Dreadnoughts don't have anything to shoot on the first turn, then hold it in reserve for the second. Again, pretty handy, particularly in the way that you can manipulate Doctrines with stratagems as well. Next, as we mentioned, special issue ammo has been toned down a fair bit. You get to choose either extra AP and range, extra damage, ignores cover, or plus one to wound on your bolt shots, but it now only applies to a few different weapons, such as bolters, combi bolters, and stalker bolters on the veterans, and a fair few of the weapons that the characters carry into battle. It's really quite a fun mechanic, but I'm just not sure it gets over the line of turning standard veterans into an actual effective damage dealing unit. Paying 20 points for a couple of strength 4 AP nothing damage one shots, even with one of these buffs, just feels a tiny bit underwhelming. Perhaps gets more effective if you pair them with combi weapons. 
Finally, the other unique mechanic is kill teams. You can use mixed units within one troop slot, so say take some intercessors and hellblasters along in the same unit, and the whole unit gets obsec, and you have the potential for tanking damage dealing units with far cheaper and more durable models. The whole unit gets obsec, so if you do choose to combat squad them, you essentially could have a squad full of specialists, and have them running around what they do normally, but with the nice advantage of having objectives secured. You also do have the option to give kill team specialisations, but for me they cost quite a bit for some fairly situational benefits, as you usually have to tailor to a battlefield role before you even know if your opponent has any of them on the table. We'll talk a bit more about Death Watch kill teams in the unit section. Before we get there though, let's talk about a few other strong rules from the Codex. Warlord traits, relics and psychic, stratagems and unique secondaries. First up, Death Watch do have a few decent Warlord traits. Maybe one of their best is being able to steal the Warlord trait of a different chapter, and of those my pick would be the Dark Angels one, Brilliant Strategist. That allows you to roll back the Doctrine to the one previously, so say if you were in Tactical you could go into Devastator, or if you were in Assault then you could go into Tactical. As part of a Gun Castle, particularly something with heavy weapons like one of those Volkite Dreads, getting a bit of extra AP could easily be worth a Warlord trait. The other one that's really quite nice for a Gun Castle is Nowhere to Hide, that's an aura of Ignore's cover which means that you don't get any benefit to your saving throw if your opponent happens to be hunkered up in some light cover like Ruins. Otherwise, Vigilance Incarnate can be quite nice for re-roll ones against one battlefield roll. Basically allows you to ensure that you get your wound rolls even if you're targeting a battlefield roll that isn't your primary target. And as usual, the standard Codex Space Marine ones can be pretty good. A lot of Death Watch do get obsec, but if you're running around with some Dreadnoughts or some non-troops units, then Rites of War is usually good or you can just think about the Imperium Sword for a more fighty character. For Relics, the Death Watch are slightly spoiled for choice, they have a fair few really good ones that I often consider picking up. One of the single best, I think, is the Dominus Aegis. It's a Relic Storm Shield that gives an aura of a 5 plus invul save to any core or character unit within 6 inches. This is really nice to have for literally any unit with a 3 plus armor save, though in particular it's really nice with Redemptor Dreadnoughts, who are kind of somewhat tough in their own right, but giving a 5 plus invul save will really help them out with high AP anti-tank guns. Next up we have the Beacon Angelis. This one's a good mobility one, basically allows you to teleport a unit somewhere on the board to your character. You could think about having this on a character with a jump pack, jump them forward turn 1 if you want to, and you essentially have the equivalent of a deep striking death watch kill team jumping from the back of the board all the way to the front lines. Could be nice to put a relatively slow moving kill team down right on a midfield objective, Hopefully something with a lot of storm shields to tank the enemy return fire, or either some powerful shooting or melee to deal some damage. For shooting buffs, the Tome of Ectoclades is another really tempting one to pick up. It's a once per game buff, you basically choose one data sheet from the enemy army, and then all your Death Watch core units within 6 inches will get to reroll wound rolls against that data sheet. Again, this one's pretty spectacular in a Death Watch Dreadnought castle, and particularly if your opponent is spamming a whole ton of very similar units, you could put yourself in a position to deal some absolutely crazy damage. It's very nice with those Volkite Contemptor Dreadnoughts in particular, as they'll like the reroll wound rolls with their relatively low strength, and still also almost double the chance of you getting any sixes with mortal wounds, which could be really powerful. Finally, the Volkan Pattern Auspicator is a really quite nice buff against Fly. It's a 6 inch aura of plus 1 to hit against any units that have the Fly keyword, a little bit situational and matchup dependent. In some games, it's going to be an absolutely amazing shooting buff for the include. In some games it might well do nothing. Still though, a very helpful addition to an already fairly stacked shooting castle. So decent warlord traits and relics, but the Death Watch can also muster a fairly potent psychic phase as well. I think Death Watch librarians are stronger than most, and well worth considering in a Death Watch list. My favourite spell that they have is a 5 plus feel no pain type save that works on infantry or bikers, and on big multi wound space marine infantry that can take a lot of storm shields, that's going to allow them to weather the storm of enemy firepower very nicely indeed. It can mean that Death Watch kill teams are one of the stronger units to take the centre of the board. It's hard to argue 10 guys with storm shields and this buff up at the same time. There's a few other interesting things in the rest of the Xenomancer's discipline. Maybe my second favourite though might be the fights first and plus one to hit in melee buff. Really quite nice in combination with kill teams with things like lightning claws or thunder hammers, particularly as you can get the assault doctrine early. Moving on, let's look at stratagems, secondaries and the kill team specialisations. Maybe one of the most important stratagems that they have access to is a 2 command point 1 to use any chapter tactic for a turn. And while there are a fair few tempting options out there, I think the most powerful use of this is White Scars, as it allows kill teams to advance and charge if they need to. 
It could really surprise your opponent by giving a kill team quite a lot more extra threat range, and particularly things like veteran bikers, who should be moving 20 inches before making an almost guaranteed charge. For one command point, they have access to a plus one attack against Xenos units, if you really want to overpower them in melee. That one's handy to be able to flex into just if you need it against a close combat. There's a one command point one to allow you to take a second warlord trait on the same character. Could be handy for a shooting buffing character maybe, maybe stacking things like Nowhere to Hide or Vigilance Incarnate. Death War to get a discounted version of the Changing Doctrine stratagem. It's only one command points to put yourself into a different doctrine. So basically if they need Assault Doctrine they'll usually be able to get it. And the same with Devastator. It's one command point to put a unit in the Teleportarium to Deep Strike. Not bad at all for pop-up threats arriving onto the board. And they've got a bunch of useful infantry ones as well. One CP to fall back and shoot if you've got a van vet in the unit, or one command point to fall back and charge if you've got a biker in the unit. You can mix both of these in the same squad with Proteus kill teams, so can make for a fairly flexible unit there. For Space Marine secondary objectives, I'd say that Oaths of Moment might be one of the better ones for Death Watch. For Oaths of Moment, you really want to be holding the centre of the table, and Death Watch with their big kill teams with Storm Shields, and maybe that Psychic spell, have some of the best units to do so. If you are playing against Xenos though, you might strongly consider Suffer Not the Alien. Basically you get one victory point for every Xenos unit killed by the Death Watch, which provided your opponent has got a fair amount of units on the board, is almost guaranteed to score you a fair amount of points. Finally, the Kill Team Specialisms are the Death Watch's unique points upgrade ability. You basically fork out a fair amount of points for plus one to wound against certain battlefield roles. I think that some of them could certainly be very powerful in the right situations, it's just they're really unreliable. If you knew exactly what sort of army you'd be fighting, and you could tailor your army to counter it, they could well be worth the investment. In more competitive games though, where you don't know what your opponent is using, they are kind of a liability. You might just get matched against an opponent that brings absolutely none of the battlefield role that you're trying to target, so in some games it might perform very well, in other games you might just have flat wasted points. I'd say out of them, maybe the cheap Achilla one might be the most interesting. It allows you to select a different battlefield role for the Xenos Hunters chapter tactic, so it could be quite nice for an individual strike unit within your Death Watch force, maybe one that's going to operate completely independently and try to take down one part of the enemy's list. I can't say I've seen people using these very much though in competitive Death Watch. So moving on, let's talk a bit about the Death Watch's unique data sheets and their different types of kill team. For me, I'd say out of their unique options, the standard Death Watch veteran squad and Proteus kill team are by far the most interesting. Death Watch veterans in themselves just have a crazily flexible data sheet basically able to mix and match all manner of ranged and close combat war gear, and they even get discounted power weapons like the Vanguard veterans thrown in. You can either build them for ranged or melee purposes, if going melee I think I'd be hard pressed to turn down the lightning claws and storm shields, maybe with the odd heavy thunder hammer thrown in, which I think is pretty decent value for the points at AP-3 and damage 4. If tooling them up for ranged purposes, a lot of people seem to like death watch shotguns, being able to choose between damage 2 slugs or essentially a flamer attack at close range is really quite powerful. Otherwise standard bolters, stalker bolters and combi weapons all seem quite good at range. If you're more looking for a squad to either deep strike and deal some range damage or capture home field objectives. You could also think about frag cannons as well. Quite cheap and effective firepower for 10 points extra. They work very nicely coming out of drop pods or out of the teleportarium. Perhaps the biggest strength of the Proteus kill team though is allowing you to combine a 10 man unit with things like van vets and bikers. A very common tactic seems to be to take 5 of the Death Watch veterans with shotguns and then pair them up with something like 2 or 3 vanguard veterans and 2 or 3 bikers and then have the fast movers split off into their own combat squad for a really quick and threatening melee unit that can jump straight up the board and has that all important objective secured. Provided the bikers have an infantry model within the same unit, they essentially function as infantry themselves, which allows them to do helpful things such as going straight through ruined walls. In addition, they can fall back and shoot or fall back and charge if they need to, using their squad specific stratagems. Otherwise, for the kill teams, I think that the rest are kind of okay, though not enormously stand out. I think the Spectrus kill team has maybe some of the most interesting loadouts you can put down. You can make an interesting utility unit out of them, maybe take max reavers and take a single infiltrator in the unit, and you've got a unit with both Terra Troopers and Omni Scramblers, all for a very cheap points cost. You could also try and fill some mass eliminators if you wanted to, potentially having five eliminators within a single unit, which doesn't seem too bad to me, as they are really quite cheap in points now. Otherwise, I think the Fortis kill team can be interesting. You can put Obsec on Outriders if you want to, and Intercessors are just generally quite good battle line infantry. As are the heavy Intercessors from the Indomitor kill team, 
You could potentially have them tanking damage for things like eradicators, or just again combat squad them off, and you could have some eradicators with obsec if you wanted them. In general though, I think that the firstborn tend to outshine the primaris, just for sheer amount of flexibility and customization. Otherwise, to be honest though, I'm not super overwhelmed by any of the other choices out of the Death Watch Codex. I think a lot of them are usable, but maybe just not quite as strong as some of the options from standard Codex Space Marines. The Watchmaster's maybe a touch on the pricey side, but quite a well-rounded commander. It means that you don't have to pay for a chapter master, and he has a decently fighty weapon built in. I think he just struggles to compete a bit against this captain with the Storm Shield, as he allows you to take the Dominus Aegis. The special characters, Captain Artemis, Chaplain Cassius, and Codicea Notorian all seem to have their advantages over the standard builds, though with the Death Watch relics and Warlord traits being quite as powerful as they are, I think it's usually best to be able to mix and match between them, and get those really powerful options on the table where you need them. I think they can all be very strong though for their own given roles. The Veteran Barkers and Death Watch Terminator datasheets are both interesting. The Veteran Barkers in particular, as they're basically flat upgrades on the standard Space Marine Barks, getting an extra attack for no extra points cost. In general though, for both of these units, I'd be very tempted to include them alongside Death Watch veterans in Proteus kill teams, as you basically get a very similar unit, but you get objective secured on top of it. Finally, the Corvus Blackstar, the Death Watch Flyer, I think really doesn't compare too badly compared with plenty of the other Space Marine Flyers out there, but I kind of feel like it plays a bit at odds with what Death Watch are usually wanting to do. Delivering units is a little bit redundant, as you can deep strike them with Teleportarium if needed, and for firepower, Dreadnoughts are usually going to do you better, as you typically get more damage for the points, and you get all the synergies that Death Watch are so good with. Still though, as Space Marine Flyers go, it's really not the worst. They certainly can be made to work, particularly if you invest a couple of command points in them, so you can't shoot one down turn one. Otherwise, there's plenty of other solid options out there in the Space Marine Codex. As I mentioned at the start of the video, Dreadnought Castle is one of the best ways to go with Death Watch right now. People usually seem to use Tech Marines to bear a lot of the Warlord traits and relics, as they're quite good for repairing the Dreadnoughts, and can give them a plus one to hit as well. Take a Tech Marine or two alongside a Captain with the Dominus Aegis, then some combination of Redemptor Dreadnoughts with the Plasma, or the Relic Contemptor Dreadnoughts from the Imperial Armor Compendium with the Twin Volkite Culverins. As I did mention before, the latter are some of the best firepower units for Space Marines in general, and Death Watch are one of the best places to field them. They'll love the wound rerolls from the Tome of Ectoclades, and any Doctrine manipulation that you can do for them to get the extra AP-1 on their guns, either with Brilliant Strategist or for one command point a turn. Otherwise, in the HQ section, Librarians and Captains with Storm Shields are both decent, though I'd usually not really bother with Lieutenants at all, due to Death Watch already having plenty of wound rerolls throughout the army. And then most of the stronger lists do seem to be taking Proteus kill teams in the troop slots. Definitely a fair few different ways that you can field them, but squads with shotguns backed up with some fast movers with van vets and bikes does seem to be a very viable way to field them. Otherwise, just any of the generic strong Space Marine units out there are nice. Blade Guard veterans for toughness plus melee, Eradicators or attack bites to deliver some anti-tank punch, the Phobos troops or eliminators for forward deployment purposes, and maybe some company veterans thrown in to protect some of your key characters. To finish up, I thought we'd take a look at a couple of competitive lists. This first one's by Evan Stump, who used it to take first at the Power 9 Games GT. The vast majority of Death Watch lists do seem to revolve around a single battalion. There's just very rarely all that much need to take bigger detachments, seeing as they can fit so much in their troop slot, and battalions give you a decent amount of elite slots for things like Dreadnoughts. The force is led by a Primaris Captain and Primaris Tech Marine. The Captain's got the Storm Shield, Dominus Aegis, the Nowhere to Hide ignores cover trait, and also interestingly the Storm of Fire Warlord trait. That's one of the core Codex Space Marine ones, where any unmodified wound roll of a 6 gets an extra pip of AP. I can see how that would work with the very low AP Relic Contemptors. The Primaris Tech Marine is a master of the forge for extra repairs, he takes the Tome of Ectoclades for the four re-rolls to wound, and he takes the Warden of the Ancients Warlord trait, which is the master of the forge one that gives Dreadnoughts plus one strength and attack. Certainly would make those Redemptors a force to be reckoned with if the opponent does try and assault the castle. They're all supporting an absolutely enormous Dreadnought castle. To be Redemptors with Macroplasma Incinerators, Icarus Pods and Onslaught Gatling Cannons, and three Relic Contemptors with Twin Volkite Culverins. Between those two characters and those six Dreadnoughts, this little combo really is one of the strongest ranged shooting options in 40k right now, I think. If you have units exposed, regardless of what they are, they are likely to get very badly beaten up by this formation. Just the Relic Contemptors alone should be well capable of hoovering units off the board, dealing hefty damage just with mortal wounds alone on the turn that they use the tome. 
Otherwise, for the core of the army, there's two Proteus kill teams, each of which takes five veterans with shotguns, and then a combat squad of the fast movers with two lightning claw and storm shield vanguard veterans and three veteran bikers. Some decent bodies to hold down the home field objectives and then move up to hold the middle. As well as that, there's a few other support units for jumping around and doing actions and objectives, five incursors to take the midfield, a little two-man squad of company veterans likely to protect the characters with lightning claws and storm shields, a unit of three suppressors for some reasonable firepower and good movement, and then a unit of four servitors which could hold down a home field objective or do actions in the right circumstances. Overall, it's just a list with ridiculously scary firepower, backed up by a bunch of decent troops to scrap for the midfield, and stop the enemy just from directly marching straight up to the dreadnoughts and assaulting them. A really solid list overall, it must be very intimidating not to be able to put virtually any units out in the open without knowing that they're going to get hoovered away by the dreadnoughts. I also thought seeing as the London Grand Tournament happened the other day and Alex Harrison took second with Death Watch, we'd take a look at his list. This one again has the absolutely maximal dreadnought castle, but instead of having a fairly balanced troop section, it just doubles down on yet more damage. The dreadnoughts are basically the same except two of the contemptors take cyclone missile launchers. The tech marines are regular ones, not primaris, and there's one more tech marine than the previous list. The warlord traits and relics combo is a bit different as well. The captain has rights of war for obsec dreadnoughts, the Dominus Aegis and Brilliant Strategist to manipulate doctrines, and the Tech Marines take the Tome of Ectoclades for those rerolls, Nowhere to Hide for Ignore Cover, and the Vulcan Pattern Auspicator. That's the one that gives you plus one to hit against Fly. So, if anything, even more devastating firepower than the last one, even just out of the main castle. Otherwise, though, in the troop section, there's three squads of five veterans, all of which take a mighty four frag cannons, and the Sergeant takes a Death Watch shotgun. They're going to be deep striking, I think one in a teleportarium as far as I can tell, and the other two squads loaded up into a drop pod. I've not seen the frag cannons used all that much before in terms of damage dealers, but I can see it fitting in quite well with the meta at the moment. They'll be very effective against data sheets like Drakari Raiders, or maybe things like Admech Iron Striders, or any of their planes without chaff launchers. They'll also be able to get where they need to, potentially engage targets that can't be seen by the main dreadnought castle. Finally, for yet more firepower, we have a Sicarian Arcus tank with a heavy bolter. That's the Ignore's line of sight version. 2d6, strength 6, AP minus 1 and damage 2 shots. Should at least do a little bit of work to whistle down enemy units that the rest of the list can't see. A pretty hard work to take out as well with 14 wounds and a 2 plus armour. Overall, it's not really all that much of a death watch list, mainly all about vehicles and shooting. But it's really quite fun to see a list that leans quite so heavily on crazy damage dealing. You'd have to be killing the Death Watch units very quickly indeed, before they erase your units off the board. So I think that just about brings us to the end of our overview of Death Watch in 9th. They do seem to be doing quite well for Space Marine armies, though maybe a bit over-reliant on their Dreadnought Castle tactics. Not sure I would have seen that one coming, coming from their 8th edition codex. Let me know what you think of the faction down in the comments below, and feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see similar videos to this. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description. Making all the videos does take a fair amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolute massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.